Hi guys, there's a lot of Elden Ring information floating out there, a lot of the same information, and it's easy to miss bits and parts of it that are quite interesting. Here's a full rundown of everything you need to know that has been said so far about Elden Ring. Uh, the only thing we won't touch on is lore related stuff, we mostly focus on gameplay. So here I went through and read pretty much all of the Miyazaki interviews. I noted some, some few interesting uh, tidbits of information. So Miyazaki was asked what was the intention when creating Elden Ring. And something that is of note here is Elden Ring was meant to be an evolution of Dark Souls. So Elden Ring was meant to be an evolution of the Dark Souls franchise. And he also wanted the story to be thicker than ever. Hence the collaboration with Mr. George R. R. Martin. Why is it not called Dark Souls 4 since there's so many similar elements? When Miyazaki was asked why the game was not called Dark Souls 4, he answered the Dark Souls setting would, would have bound us with unnecessary restrictions in terms, of, in terms of plot, gameplay and enemy design. He wanted to make a new dark fantasy game by utilizing all the know-how they have cultivated without avoiding the fact that it resembles Dark Souls. So what they wanted to do here, they wanted to create a game that was in the same vein but they did not want to get the restrictions that came with the franchise that was already established. But they did not mind if it resembled the franchise. Therefore, they did not really mind using any of the stuff they had previously created, like uh, a lot of the assets, for instance. It is to note here that Elden Ring was created with a big sense of scale, so huge world. But Miyazaki also mentions that there's also a big sense of volume, so which means even though the map will be big, the amount of content, the density of enemies, everything will be higher than in previous games. The storyline is about 30 hours without doing any of the side activities. There's multiple ending and it is also told throughout the world as in uh, say the Dark Souls setting. But you will also have more NPCs interaction and a bit of a uh, deeper storytelling through the NPCs as well. A lot of uh, people seem to have the impression that the horse is going to play a big part in Elden Ring. Although from all the interviews we've seen so far, the horse mechanics seem to take a bit of a back seat. So you cannot ride your horse everywhere around the map. It is only in the open areas. You can also not ride your horse in multiplayer. So the moment you have someone else in your world, you cannot ride your horse. And all of these make me believe that the way the horse is going to work, it is basically going to be like some sort of summon power where you summon this horse and the horse disappears as soon as you dismount it. And I guess you'd have to be on foot to summon phantoms and you won't be able to reuse that power once you're in multiplayer. So this is quite interesting here. Miyazaki also mentions that the horse was meant for riding, not necessarily for player battle. The players will most likely want, want to dismount before engaging in combat, although it is possible to fight on horseback. Speaking of multiplayer, there is co-op, PvP, invasions, and message system. You will be able to summon phantoms in most areas, but not everywhere. There is also a new spirit summons mechanic where you can defeat an enemy endgame and sort of capture it and be able to resummon that enemy to use it in battle with you. The summonable spirit enemies can take various roles. You can summon them, say, for a shield role, you can summon them for a bow range attack role, you can summon them for a rear guard, you can summon them to get the aggro from enemies. There's various ways you can use them. Miyazaki also mentions that some of them are useless and you might just want to summon them for fun or because they're aesthetically pleasing, which is quite funny. The enemy spirits that you summon will have a growth curve to them, which means you might be able to see some experience, customize them a little bit, or grow their stats. Since Elden Ring is huge, it would have been difficult to find summon signs in this big world. So they have highlighted special locations where players can leave their sign or see who is currently available. In an online confrontation, we can assume here they're referring to invasions, they have added interface elements that provide enough information for both participants in order to avoid endless hide and seek. This does not specifically state that you will know where the enemy player is at all time, but this seems to indicate 
something quite similar. The summon system in Elden Ring is very familiar to Dark Souls. It is still a signed summon system. After you defeat a boss, the summon will again be sent back home. Mizaki states that he wanted to reduce the stress in multiplayer and uh, even though this can, this can be interpreted in many different ways, I think what he's referring to here is that there won't be any requirement for playing in multiplayer as in you won't need to ember yourself, you won't need to use an um, humanity or any rare item in order to partake in online interaction. Elden Ring really wanted to encourage the online play it seems. The message system, Dead Phantoms, Bloodstained is making a comeback but there's a little twist to it. You can sort of set up groups which you can only see bloodstains and messages in said group. A group is going to be determined by simply passwords. So people in certain groups, so you're going to be able to pretty much share the messages and bloodstains and stuff like that with only your friends. Or, you know, I don't know, Reddit groups or something. Regarding PvP, yes, there will be PvP. Yes, invasions are confirmed as well. But there is also another mention of PvP which he refers to as optional PvP. We can assume that this probably means something like a you know, dueling system like similar to Dark Souls 3 where you can summon enemy signs or perhaps maybe even an arena. In this particular interview, the interviewer mentions that Miyazaki was quite excited when talking about PvP. They are still working on the PvP aspect of the game. And they tried very hard to make this aspect of the game as less annoying as possible for both players. So this is a quote here, but this can be interpreted in many different ways. Covenants are making a comeback. They have their own characteristic like role-playing, but they are not a mandatory part of uh, multiplayer. About the map and the world itself, it is not an empty field meant for horse riding from point A to point B. It is filled with things to find, dangers and memorable encounters. Now what can you find around the world? Well, there are many items of equipment that are hidden, such as weapons, armors, spells, skills, spirit for summoning, like we mentioned earlier, ingredients for crafting, interesting. Miscellaneous items and consumables can be created while exploring and collecting materials. However, it is mentioned that HP recovery items will be treated specifically. You can explore the map freely, but not all areas are accessible from the start of the game. There's also a blessing guidance spell similar to the Souls game, which uh, will pretty much tell you exactly where to go, but this is not mandatory. The world in Elden Ring is divided in many parts. Miyazaki does not specify how many open world areas there is, but they do refer to open world areas in plural for the most part in all the interviews. And there is also six large areas that are more akin to what we know from the Souls games. So think of it like areas like Pontiff, Lotric Castle, stuff like this. There's also smaller areas such as forts, catacombs, caves, and tunnels. So this is not just six big areas, a few open worlds. There's also many different caves and dungeons which you can explore. You do have access to a map for open world areas only. So not for dungeons, not for the six uh, souls-like big areas, only for the big open worlds, you'll be able to have a map for them. Miyazaki mentions that this is not a map filled with markers that would distract from your attention. You will have to place the markers yourself to mark points of interest. Regarding gameplay, what about stealth? Miyazaki refers to stealth as a simple implementation of stealth, so which means you'll be able to crouch, sneak, go in tall grass, be less likely to be detected. And this is pretty much what a standard sneaking mechanics pretty much sounds like. We also get confirmation that backstabs are in the game and as well as stealth attacks. Since there is mention of both backstabs and stealth attacks, I believe that there will be a, st a stealth attack modifier that's not necessarily related to backstabs. There will be a stamina bar in Elden Ring, but it won't have as much influence on the player as in previous Souls games. 
Thanks to the Elden Ring trailer, it is fairly obvious that the engine which Elden Ring is based on is the Dark Souls 3 engine. A lot of the animations are basically copy and pasted from Dark Souls 3 to Elden Ring, so you can expect the base framework of combat to be taken from Dark Souls 3. There's a rough translation that goes as follows. There are also things like counterattacking from behind the shield holder. This can be interpreted as you can parry enemies or this could refer to guard breaking. We know from the Elden Ring trailer that repost animation make a comeback from Dark Souls 3. Fall damage here is reduced and is adjusted to fit the world of Elden Ring that favors exploration by jumping a lot more. Low sweeping attacks can be dodged by jumping. You can also counter by doing a heavy attack starting from a jump. You can customize the appearance, freely select weapons, armors, magic, etc. You'll also get to be able to raise and modify the stats of your character similar to Dark Souls 3. A new feature that we've talked about in previous vid is the addition of combat skills. It is explicitly stated in an interview that combat skills are maneuvers adopted from Dark Souls 3. So combat skills are basically weapon arts from Dark Souls 3. Whereas weapon arts were tied to your weapon in Dark Souls 3, the change here is that you'll be able to assign different weapon arts to different weapon, therefore customizing the moveset of your weapon. A clarification here, only one combat skill can be attached to one weapon. However, you can freely change which skill you'll be attaching to which weapon. There is also about a hundred different skills or weapon arts in total not all skills can be assigned to every weapon. There's also a lot of weapons to go along with them. So it's fair to assume that there's some balance work done here. You won't see any weapon arts coupled with just any weapon. What about the difficulty? A lot of people dropped Sekiro because some of the bosses were too tough. Therefore, they are trying to reduce as much of that in Elden Ring. But they are not doing so by reducing the difficulty of the boss. They want to give casual players more options to deal with difficult situations, such as multiplayer, the spirit enemy summons that can aid you in battle, the stealth mechanic, as well as all various combat options, such as spells, weapon arts, skills, etc. The weather will also affect difficulty, nighttime reduces the visibility, certain enemies also only spawn at night, making for different encounters, and nighttime is usually a lot harder. Customization. You'll be able to choose from around 10 different classes when creating a new character. You collect experience points to rise in levels, so expect a similar level up system as in previous Dark Souls games. You can freely pick and choose which attributes you want to level up. It is to note here as far as the release date is confirmed, it is January 21st, 2021. Miyazaki mentions that he is confident about the release date and that the staff are trying their best to make and finish the game. Okay, so there you go. This is most of the information we got on Elden Ring so far. I hope you enjoyed this. In the meantime, if you're looking for daily PvP content, you know where it's at. Please sub to the channel. Take care, everyone. Running. Oh, no panic. I like that. A bit of a desperation move there by him, but well. Also get the ability to summon which roughly, roughly translate <clears throat> you'll also get the ability to summon what's roughly the summon system in, in Elden the summon system in Elden Wing god damn it